So I have before me one of the only laptops truly worthy to be called a MacBook Pro killer, and that is the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360. And they also have the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro, which would be a non-two-in-one touchscreen version. But what I like about the two-in-one touchscreen version is it gives you more features along with the powerful laptop. And we're gonna get into benchmarks, functionality, usability, battery life, color gamut range, all of that in this video to help you make the right purchasing decision for your needs. Now, first and foremost, let's just clear out the elephant in the room, and that's that Apple automatically is better performance and battery life, just without question, right? I mean, it's just, it's Apple MacBook Pro. It's just better, right? Well, there is better battery life out of the MacBook Pro, but the performance on battery life actually is no longer the case. The Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 can actually export a 4K video out of Premiere Pro in less time than the MacBook Pro both plugged in and unplugged from power. But let's stay on the battery life conversation. First and foremost, you're gonna see about two hours of battery life better out of the MacBook Pro M2 Pro chip. Now, we are getting very close in the battery life range here for the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360, but Apple is still more efficient than the latest Intel i7-1360p CPU inside of the Book 3. So the crown does go to the Apple MacBook Pro right off the bat for battery life and efficiency. If you're catching this video the week of its release, March 20th through the 26th, then Samsung is running their big spring discovery sale. Samsung S23, S22, TVs are on sale, and the Galaxy Books are on sale. So definitely gonna wanna head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you're not catching this video during the Samsung discovery sale, I would still head on over there because a lot of times they have the Galaxy Books on sale. So you definitely wanna check the price compared to other websites, you might be able to get a better deal at samsung.com. Again, links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Now, looking at color gamut range and color accuracy between these two laptops, they are neck and neck. The one place that the Apple MacBook Pro wins out is brightness. It gets about 100 nits brighter of a screen than the Samsung Galaxy Book 3. However, the color gamut range are almost identical across the board. Now, one area that I was really impressed with the Book 3 was actually the Delta E. It only scored a 0.63 Delta E versus the MacBook Pro's 1.21. So the colors that are reproduced on the AM OLED display are actually more accurate than the MacBook Pro display. So if you want a more color accurate display, I recommend going with the Book 3. Surprisingly, right? Because I always thought Apple was just better in every single way. Hmm. Interesting. Now, in regards to the port selection, uh, ah, Apple does win again for the port selection. And the reason being is the full size SD card reader. Now on the left side panel, you can see that the laptops come with two USB type C's and we have our power adapter as well as our headphone jack on the MacBook Pro. Now keep in mind that the Book 3 has to occupy one of these USB type C's to charge the laptop. Now on the other side of both laptops, we have the HDMI for the MacBook Pro and additional USB type C and a full size SD card reader, whereas the Book 3 only comes with a micro SD card reader. This was continual huge faux pas, in my opinion, on Samsung's part. They need to bring that full size SD card reader to the Book 3. Just please do it. It's, I just, yeah, anyway. The headphone jack is here on the Book 3, and really the biggest faux pas, in my opinion, is going to be the SD card reader, as well as needing to use one of the USB Type C's on the Book 3 to charge the laptop. I wish they would have added one more, and that would have at least gotten us closer to matching the port selection on the MacBook Pro. Now, yes, I know this is the 14-inch model, so the comparison I'm about to do isn't gonna make sense, and I'm fine with that, because I'm looking more at performance and usability overall. But as you look here, the trackpad difference between the Book 3 and the 14 inch on the MacBook Pro is substantially different. Yep, it just is because this is a 14 inch and this is a 16 inch. So if I had the 16 inch, they would be almost identical. The MacBook Pro 16 inch trackpad is just as massive as the Book 3. However, the one thing that really matters about the MacBook Pro compared to the Book 3 and where my hat is off to Apple is they center the trackpad on the laptop's keyboard deck. Now, I understand that the reason this trackpad is not centered is because the keyboard is off put a little bit due to the numpad on the Book 3. However, I don't care. The trackpad should be centered because as a right-handed user, I always feel like I'm having to kind of shift myself over to the left side of the device in order to make sure I'm clicking accurately for both left and right click. If I was a left-handed user, this wouldn't bother me as much. But because I'm right-handed, it just it feels uncomfortable. I'm kind of always reaching 
under and over my hand in order to make the right clicks and the right moves on my keyboard and trackpad. Now, I will say that the Scissor Switch keyboard on the Apple MacBook Pro, without a doubt, is just one of the best keyboards on the market. It has a nice click, it's very snappy, responsive, and they've really taken years to perfect it. But I will say that the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 is a fantastic keyboard as well. And both trackpads are great. One thing that I like more about the trackpad on the Book 3 though, from a functional standpoint, is that it is a manual click trackpad. On the MacBook Pro, this is a vibration click trackpad. That means it's never actually clicking. There's only a vibration that goes through the trackpad to let you know that you've activated the clicking mechanism. The Book 3 actually clicks manually. I like it, it's more satisfying to me as more of a traditionalist, it fits better for my use case and how I use the computer. Also, one big bonus for the Book 3 is the bezel is almost the exact same as the MacBook Pro. However, you don't have the ridiculous notch. And so you have a good webcam on the top bezel of the computer without the ridiculous notch. And here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see both how they look and sound on either device. This is the webcam on the Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch M2 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And this is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, one area where the MacBook Pro completely trashes the Book 3 is going to be the speakers. Here's a quick audio sample of the speakers so you can hear how they sound in use. <laughs> And of course, last but not least, here's a quick sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad on both devices so you can see how those sound. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of either of these devices, the Book 3 is actually going to be more affordable because this is the 16 inch version. And over here on the MacBook Pro, we have the 14 inch version. If you're going to get a 14 inch Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro, not the Pro 360, the Pro, which comes in a 14 inch model, it's gonna be substantially more affordable than the MacBook Pro. However, it's going to have equal performance as this 16 inch device, and we'll get into the benchmarks here in just a minute. Now we're gonna flip things around a little bit and I'm gonna start with video editing. Normally I start with the simulated benchmarks, but I wanna show you something that really debunked some of the rumors that I had floating around, even in my own head over the years about Apple. And that is that Apple is the premier device that can run both great battery life and get great performance on that battery life. In Windows, you can only get full, excellent performance when you're plugged into power. That's no longer the case with the latest i7-1360P. And we're gonna show you the 4K video editing and export times results to prove it. For the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360, plugged into power, it was a three minute and 47 second export time. For the MacBook Pro, it was about five minutes and 26 seconds. Now I unplugged the charger from the Book 3 and I saw a four minute and 10 second export time. So yes, it does not get full performance out of the device, but the performance that it gets is still better than the Apple MacBook Pro performance, both plugged in and unplugged. And the crazy thing is, you can't change that control. I can't have some fan mode to make my MacBook Pro go faster. That was on full performance mode, which I can toggle through my performance settings right here on the keyboard deck. So keep in mind that what you see is what you get as far as the performance is concerned. There's no editing your fan modes or thermal modes on the Apple device. That's all controlled automatically through Apple's software. Now let's move into the simulated benchmarks and you can see in Geekbench single core, multi-core, that they line up pretty much neck and neck for single core performance. However, multi-core performance is where the MacBook Pro definitely stands out quite a bit for the simulated benchmarks. You can see both in Cinebench R23 single core and multi-core as well. As the Geekbench, you just saw that that is true. So across the board, you're gonna see better multi-core performance, which means better multitasking performance out of the MacBook Pro.
Now, as we move on to the Photoshop benchmark, you can see that the Apple MacBook Pro beats out the Book 3 by almost 200 points. Now, this is a substantial difference in being that the Book 3 taps out at 16 gigs of RAM. This is just the beginning for the Apple MacBook Pro. Now, the price difference between these two models is about $100 going from the 16 inch to the 14 inch, okay? I know I'm comparing 14 to 16 and forgive me, I just don't have the 16 inch model. Let's all cry and get frustrated and get that over with. If you go ahead and you buy the 14 inch model of the book three, you're gonna save substantially more money and you're gonna get equal performance because it has an i7-1360P both in the 16 inch model of the book three Pro 360 as well as the 14 inch model of the book three Pro. Okay, so you can actually save a little bit more money if you match the size of the laptops that we're discussing here. I'll put links in the description so you can check the live pricing for yourself. So keep in mind, this is the base model. This is as much RAM as you can get. If you were to be able to upgrade the RAM in the Book 3, we would easily match the performance. However, we cannot. You can't upgrade it from the factory. You can't order it with 32 gigs of RAM. They've severely bottlenecked themselves into this 16 gig configuration. Very disappointing, but that is what they've done. Hopefully they'll learn from their mistake and give us 32 gig option in the future. And then we would literally have an apples to apples from performance comparison for this app. Okay. Complaining session over, we'll keep moving forward. Next thing we're gonna look at is 4K Playback and Premiere Pro. Now they're both neck and neck in this department. They both have zero drop frames, which is an improvement over last year's book two coming into the book three. Now, as far as 6K B-RAW playback is concerned, the Apple MacBook Pro does win. However, I don't give it the crown for 6K B-RAW. The reason being is the export time severely lacked. I tried to do a 6K to 6K export out of the MacBook Pro M2 Pro, and it would have taken over an hour to finish that export. On the Book 3, it took 28 minutes. On the chart that you are seeing, you're seeing the MacBook Pro export from 6K to 4K in 25 minutes. You're seeing the Book 3 export from 6K to 6K in 28 minutes. So substantially better results out of the Book 3. And the reason that I've kept that on the chart is because every other laptop on that chart is 6K to 6K. That's the standard export test that I do. And Apple just couldn't rise to the challenge for the base model, the 14-inch MacBook Pro M2 Pro. Now, if you're a DaVinci Resolve user, you definitely want to consider using the MacBook Pro as the export time for 4K out of the Book 3 was about 14 minutes, where the MacBook Pro was five minutes and 27 seconds. So uh, a huge landslide for the MacBook Pro for DaVinci Resolve users. However, I will say punch for punch that if you want to get the best bang for buck, Windows laptop that matches performance and gives you a better price point than the MacBook Pro, it is thinner and lighter. Just showing you here, this is the 14 inch model and this is the 16 inch model you can see that even the 16 inch model is thinner than the 14 and it's lighter than the MacBook Pro 14 and we have the 16 here. So you have found a MacBook Pro killer if you want a Windows laptop. If you don't want a Windows laptop, then don't buy a Windows laptop because the MacBook Pro is one of the best laptops on the market. However, if you are looking for a Windows alternative, you have found it in the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 and Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro. That is what I believe. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and I will see you here in the next video.